a word pertaining to um, <clears throat> some distinctions between Hegel and um, Heidegger. Um, so the oft uh, repeated word and um, as it were grand uh, statement on time of Hegel um, you must write it down um, uh, Heidegger uh, let's say has already outstripped in the sense that in um, Alfine Ander Zetzung or Zetzen, I'm in a sort of a, a hubbub of conflict with uh, the whole tradition which comes out of Heidegger's thinking of his break from uh, scholasticism. He also thereby has broken with this uh, necessity. Um, why? Because what Hegel is pointing to is um, the scholastic uh, conception of the place of language, which stems ultimately from uh, the Greek conception. So we're into, in a certain sense, this kind of um, deep billabong or um, swamp of uh, Derrida on the questions of grammar, questions of predication and such things. But what's the simple question of the form of predication of something as something? It's that um, something which is uh, singular and in the, what we were just calling in the last uh, section, the um, first person to immediate. Um, in speaking it, we make we speak the universal. So the idea is that language is linked up to Geist and the mind in the sense that Geist and the mind have to do with noose and the universal and the idea. Um, so that if I um, write down the time, then I bring time into um, uh, something that the mind under this uh, dispensation, under this interpretation can work with, which is um, uh, time as uh, what would be the same in any instantiation. So no matter what we're talking about, there's something time there. And by writing it down, the word time as a noun, we uh, give the universal. Um, so in Heidegger, when we say nothing, nothings, we aren't doing a predication. So this is where you can see grammar and the forms of language we're used to uh, play tricks on us in a way that we're so used to. And if you look at different languages, you see how just, for instance, just the difference between um, es gibt, which suggests that there's something that gives something. In German, whereas we in um, English say there, there's some drift where language as a whole is causing us to think differently, right? A little bit differently. Um, Ila or Hick in um, Latin, there's the language is somehow naturally point us at least um, somewhat differently. Uh, so the nothing nothings presupposes a notion that is um, me, refers to something like reality or actuality or something that could be theorized as a content. So what Heidegger is saying is when you have something like reality, what you're saying is a fact is you're doing a predication. You're saying um, of everything there's this thing called reality uh, or of everything there's this thing called time, etc., etc. Um Whereas what he wants to say is when we being that he's trying to think through is not predicated. It's not a part of a predication structure. So then we could go into the specific ways it's been thought in history from uh, the early, from um, uh, Parmenides um, 
and even before Parmenides in a certain sense, uh, to Kant with the is being the couple of the sentence. And then we could think of how Hegel is trying to treat with this difficulty. But you can see those difficulties have something to do with uh, a gra grammatology, with grammar, with the predication, with uh, the way language drifts, with the way language um, thinks. Heidegger um, ultimately, like Wittgenstein, Wittgenstein deals it with, with this in the same way as uh, the problem of the universal and trying to escape from the problem of the universal raised uh, notably or perhaps at its center by um, Socrates as staged by Plato. Um, he deals with it slightly differently than Heidegger. Heidegger gives, as it were, a specific way of going into it, but Wittgenstein just says sort of like um, we need to try to free ourselves up so that maybe we can grasp what the universal really is rather than what uh, we've been so far sort of bumping our, our heads, punching the wall against. Maybe in Wittgenstein's version, it's more like we're still punching the wall, hoping to eventually uh, break it down, whereas Heidegger is sort of um, given up that road for a different road.